Hey everybody and welcome back. It is that time of the year again, time to plan our garden for 2022. Now this space that we're going to be planning out today, this is a brand new garden space for us. We've just built all of these raised beds here. This is our first time planting here and our first time planting in raised beds. So we're going to plan this out today. It's not a huge space. It's 28 feet by 24 roughly. And it's surrounded by a chain link fence here. Uh, this is actually the pen that we're keeping our geese in currently. And each of these squares on this grid paper represents one foot. So we've got six two by eight raised beds, and then we have nine four by eights. And then we've also got this guy down here that doesn't quite match. He is a two by four. So the goals for today are to figure out where everything's gonna go, what I'm going to plant, and how many of each. I've got my seed box here. Uh, this is a photo container. It's a handy little box there with colored uh, boxes within it. Um, very handy, I bought that off of Amazon. I will try to link that down below. So this bed on the top here, uh, this is full of strawberries. So we won't be planting that one out. This bed was full of my strawberries. So I transplanted all of them in this, um, this spot in the fall. Um, just to get them out of the way so I can move that guy down there. So let's start with the plant that I'm most excited about, which is always my tomatoes. Um, tomatoes, since they need a trellis, they're going to go alongside the chain link. So we're going to put them right along here. So this is going to be 24 feet worth of tomatoes. Now they say tomatoes are supposed to be about two feet apart. Um, I have no self-control, so I'm going to smush them a little bit. Um, we're going to make it about 18 inches instead, um, just to put a couple more in there. Um, so that's going to be roughly 16 plants. One of my goals for 2022 is to actually uh, can some tomatoes, make like some salsa, some tomato juice, tomato paste. So I think I want to do half paste tomato and half slicer. So let's get these guys out. I have way more slicers <laughs> than paste because um, those are the main things I used to grow. But okay, let's start with the uh, paste tomatoes. We've got uh, two different types of Roma, Amish paste and San Marzano. Um, let's see, we only have eight plants to choose from here. So let's stick with, I've grown Roma before. I know that they grow really well here. I feel like Romas are a tried and true variety um, for what I want to do. So let's do half Romas and then the Amish paste. I've heard nothing but good things about Amish paste. Um, so I definitely want to try it. So let's do four of these and four of Amish paste. And then for the slicers, we've got lots of them. Um, the Abe Lincoln, I planted those last year. I had good luck with them. Um, one I definitely want to try is Dr. Wikis, Wikis, however you say it. Um, definitely want to try that. German Pink, that's been one of my favorites for the past couple of years. We'll probably plant some of them. More Dr. Wikis. Let's see what else we got. Um, the Black Sea Man tomatoes, they didn't do great for me. I tried those last year and I don't know. They, uh, they just didn't do super great. You can tell I like the German pinks. I <laughs> have tons of those. Um, oh, here we go. Um, Kellogg's Breakfast. I've heard really great things about it um, as a slicer, so I definitely want to try it. So we've got eight to choose from. Let's pick one more, a new variety that I've never done before. Um, let's try Wood's Famous Brimmer. I've not done that one yet. So these will be my four slicers that I try. I'm really excited about Dr. Wiki's and Kellogg's breakfast. And I'm gonna do German pink just cause I know I love that one. All right, so tomatoes are done. I love these little boxes. They can fit so many. All right, up next, let's go the opposite side here along the other side of the chain link. So this side is gonna be all beans. Again, we're gonna use that chain link as a trellis because we got mostly pole type. We've got quite a few beans here. Um, we've got Pencil Pod Black Wax Bean, uh, Kentucky Wonder Mixed Bean, Blue Lake Pole, and some more Kentucky Wonder. So beans, you plant them four inches apart. So a 24 foot row of beans is gonna be about 72 plants. 
So we've got quite a few to choose from. Um, Blue Lake is tried and true. We've grown them before, so I definitely want to use them. And this In My Gardener mixed bean, it contains Blue Lake, Top Crop Yellow, and Royal Burgundy. So since this also includes Blue Lake, we'll probably just save these for next year and try out the Kentucky Wonder instead. I've heard good things about these. And maybe if we get a second crop, um, we'll try the mixed beans. And the last section we have along the chain link is going to be this spot right here. And what we're gonna put here is peas. Now I've never grown peas before. I really like peas. I don't know why I've never tried them before, but really excited to see if we can get them to grow. Might have went a little bit crazy when I was ordering the peas, but that's okay. So we're looking at 16 feet of peas. Um, peas like beans, you can plant them four inches apart. So a 16 foot row, we're looking at about 48 plants. And I got all kinds. We've got these early frosty types. I definitely want to try these and see just how early I can plant them. I think one of the problems that I've had previously with gardening and why I kind of got discouraged is it seems like I didn't space things out correctly. And so everything would be ready to harvest at the exact same time and I would just get overwhelmed. You know, I work full time. So I'm hoping if I time everything out using one of these Clyde's garden planners, FYI, these are only like $7 on Amazon and it's amazing. I wish I had bought one of these years ago. Um, it just, it plans everything out. It shows you when stuff is harvestable. Awesome, awesome. But um, I'm gonna use that and hopefully make it to where we can get multiple harvests, um, multiple plantings, and just really maximize this space. So anyways, back to the peas. Um, so I definitely wanna try these. So I don't know, maybe, let's see, Green Arrow, Lincoln Peas. Uh, let's do these, these five. We'll just divide them up and we'll see which ones do the best. Another thing I'm going to try to do this year is actually keep good records so I can know what varieties do well. Um, again, just in previous years, I just had too much stuff going on. Um, I always focused on my chicken breeding projects um, and we were just building um, more infrastructure on our property. So the garden always kind of took the back burner, but not this year. Now we have the space in front of the tomatoes and I would like to utilize this space as much as possible. Um, as I said before, I have no self-control, so I'm going to crowd stuff a little bit admittedly, but um, another thing that I really want to grow this year are carrots. I've never been able to get a carrot to grow longer than like this long. So um, I'm hoping that, um, especially since this, um, these raised beds are gonna have really soft, um, new, super composty soil that the carrots will actually be able to grow. We have super clay soil here in Indiana, so um, I'm hoping that that's the reason why. But, um, so we're gonna try to smush in some carrots um, here in front of the tomatoes to utilize that space. And then this little guy here is just gonna be straight uh, carrots. And this bed I actually haven't filled yet. And what I plan to do is mix in some sand in with the soil to um, hopefully make it even more accommodating for some carrots. So carrots, we have quite a few. It seems like some of them are duplicates though. So carrots are only like two inches apart. So we're gonna be able to fit a ton of carrots in these spaces. So probably what I'm gonna do is just do sections where I just sprinkle the seeds um, and honestly, I'll probably use all of these varieties. Um, we've got Scarlet, I never know how to say this, Scarlet Nantes, Nance, I don't know. Um, Royal Chantenay, these are Amarillo, uh, Danvers 126 half long, and then these are the free um, cosmic purple ones that Baker Creek always sends. So we're just gonna use uh, probably all of those because um, that's a lot of carrots and we'll see what happens. Hopefully we get some um, for us and for the horses because they love carrots. And hopefully they grow longer than an inch long. All right, and then to utilize the rest of this space up here and here, I'm gonna try to grow another thing I've never been able to successfully grow, which are onions. And that's probably my number one goal. I dream of having enough onions to braid together and hang in my kitchen. I just think that's so gorgeous and so cool. Um, I'm always jealous when I see videos of people have that having that hanging in their pantry. So that is the goal. 
So this is gonna be 32 feet of onions, which is a ton. Uh, that's going to be roughly 100 plants. Um, and I went insane buying onion seeds and I don't know why <laughs> I thought I had to buy so many. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think onion seeds keep as long as other uh, types of plants. But I did buy several different ones. Um, the main thing I was looking for was their storage ability because, you know, we're only a house of two and a half. So um, we're not going to be able to eat 100 onions that quickly. So I wanted things that would last a while and would store okay. All right. So it looks like in general, I got, oops, let's scooch this one down. There we go. So it looks like in general, I got four different varieties, um, two yellow, one white, and one red. Um, these packets have a ton of seeds, like this one has 250 seeds. So um, I'll probably just divide them up evenly. Each bed will get its own variety because I've got four different types here. I also chose all these onions to be long day as well. Um, since we are in Indiana, um, we have to have the long day onion seeds. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully we can get at least one stinking onion because that would be more than I've ever been able to grow before. All right, and up next, we've got some space here that we are gonna utilize. So here and here, we are gonna put our bell peppers. We've had pretty good luck growing bell peppers in the past. Um, so I know I can grow them. So we've got several varieties here. So a 16 foot row of bell peppers. I should be able to get about 16 plants out of that. So probably I'll just do four of each. Um, I've grown all of these types. The only one I haven't grown are these um, lipstick peppers. I always assumed that these were gonna be um, spicy. I'm a total weenie when it comes to spicy stuff. I cannot handle it. So um, I had to look these up and make sure because this was a free gift. I didn't order these um, from Baker Creek, but I had to make sure that these were a sweet pepper and not a spicy one because I would not be able to handle it, but they are sweet. So we're going to try those out and see what they look like. Um, but all of these, um, I've been able to grow them and they all do really well. So should have uh, pretty good luck with some bell peppers. And to take up this space here, we're going to try something new and that is going to be spinach. I've never grown spinach before. And the only variety I have is this Bloomsdale Long Standing. Supposedly they are supposed to do well in the heat. So um, I'm excited to try that out, see how they do. So my favorite thing to use spinach for is online. There is a recipe for chicken and gnocchi soup and it tastes exactly like Olive Garden's, which is my favorite soup of all time. So it calls for a lot of spinach. So um, that's what we're gonna use that for. And to take up this space here, we are gonna try something else new, and that is going to be celery. Now, I never in a million years would have thought to buy celery, but this came in that In My Gardener grab bag. We only eat celery maybe once every six months, um, so I don't wanna give a ton of space to it, but um, I am intrigued just to see how it does, and we've got the seeds, so might as well try it. This is another thing that you need for that uh, chicken and gnocchi soup. So um, we'll use that in there as well. And then to take up the rest of the space right here, we're gonna put some broccoli in there. Um, I bought this Waltham variety from Ohio Heirloom Seeds. We'll be able to put two plants there. Broccoli is just another thing. We really don't eat it that often. So two plants should be plenty for us. All right, so now let's move to the inside of our area here. So these four here, these are all gonna be corn. Now I know corn is not something that people typically put in a raised bed, but one of the reasons why we moved our garden into this area to begin with is because of this chain link fence. The chain link fence is about six foot tall and I know deer can jump that high, but I'm hoping that since these raised beds are gonna be over here and um, once the plants get so high, the deer won't be able to see what they're gonna be landing into. I'm hoping that that's gonna be enough of a deterrent to keep them from hippity hopping their way on in there and just having themselves a corn smorgasbord like they did last year. So now I haven't bought the sweet corn seeds yet and that's because at a local greenhouse, they have this variety that sells out so quickly every single year. So I'm gonna to try to sneak in there like early February and I'm gonna to try to get the inside scoop from the workers there and see if they can tell me what variety that is and see if I can't grab a couple of bags because it just flies off the shelf and I'm assuming that there's a reason for it so it's got to be good so we're gonna see um, if all else fails I could just order some online but I'm gonna try to get that magical uh, variety that they have there 
it's embarrassing as a born and bred Hoosier to have never grown sweet corn before. So um, that's gotta happen this year. All right, and then this guy here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put four zucchini plants here. So for the zucchini, we've always just planted the Black Beauty squash. We've had great results with them. So we'll probably do two of those. And then I also got this Ford Hook variety from Baker Creek to try. Um, it says on the back that they freeze well. So we'll see how that goes. Really the main thing I like to use zucchini for is zucchini bread. And after a while you get kind of tired of it. So if I could freeze some and use it in my zucchini bread later, um, that would be a great option. And to finish out this one over here, we're just gonna do some herbs. Um, we're not huge herb people, but since I do want to make like salsas and things, um, we're definitely gonna be doing a couple of things. So I have a ton of herbs, but honestly, we don't really use a lot like basil. I don't hardly ever use basil. Um, let's see, oh, lemon basil, yeah, I don't use that. Um, we'll definitely use some parsley. Um, we'll use chives. We'll use cilantro. Um, more basil, basil. So yeah, we'll probably plant these three and then that's not going to take up much space. So let's put in some lettuce as well in that space. Um, I'm trying to grow some lettuce indoors this year and it is going okay. I haven't been able to taste it yet, but let's throw a couple of lettuce varieties in there as well. This may, this may queen looks really nice. And also this uh, tennis ball. Um, this is a romaine type. Actually, I might prefer that over the tennis ball. So maybe I'll toss in these two. But once it gets too hot, I'll probably replace those with some more herbs. All right, and our last bed we have here, we are going to do potatoes in this one. Uh, potatoes are another thing I haven't bought yet. Um, we will buy those from the same greenhouse. We're gonna get the corn. Last year we grew red Pontiac potatoes for the first time and they did awesome. We got just, there's literally a huge laundry hamper in my office just full of these gorgeous red potatoes. They did so well, especially in our clay soil. I was really surprised. So we're gonna see how they do in the raised beds. Again, I'm hoping kind of like the carrots that the softer, more composty soil that's a lot less clay. I'm hoping we get even bigger ones. Um, but yeah, those red Pontiac, they do awesome here. So in this uh, bed, we should be able to fit about 21 plants there. Um, usually we buy a big 50 pound bag of seed potatoes. So I'm sure we'll have some left over. Another thing um, that I'm gonna try this year is gonna be those potato bags. Um, they sell them on Amazon. I'm gonna try and see how they go. Um, I'll probably do a video on it and let you guys know how it works. So we'll be able to fit 21 plants here. Whatever's left over out of that 50 pound bag of seed potatoes, we're just probably gonna toss into our in the ground um, garden we're gonna throw out in that field. And whatever grows, grows. But yeah, we love potatoes here. We, we eat potatoes constantly. So um, really excited to see how they do in the raised bed. So yeah guys, that fills out the entire garden. Of course, this is draft number one. I'm sure it'll probably change by the time spring rolls around. But um, I think this is a pretty good start, a pretty good plan. If you guys have any tips or tricks for me for any of these plants, please leave them down in the comments below. I would love to hear it. I think with gardening, it's one of those things where you can read every book in the library, but it still just isn't a match to lived experience. So when it comes time to actually plant these, I will be sure to bring you guys along. I plan on doing a bunch of garden tours. Um, so hopefully you guys can learn alongside with me. So if you would like to see those videos, be sure you subscribe to my channel. If you like videos like this, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.